WWE Money in the Bank 2023 is just a few short weeks away, taking place on Saturday, the 1st of July at the O2 Arena in London. I'm going to be brave once again, predicting the match card today. Uh, I've got eight matches have gone in total, including two Money in the Bank ladder matches. Uh, but first and foremost, let's look at the Intercontinental Championship, Gunter versus Matt Riddle. Riddle is expected to have a Money in the Bank qualifier in a couple of weeks' time. I expect that he will fail at that attempt on getting in the match due to Gunter. Gunter has already focused on Riddle since the Battle Royal where Mustafa Ali actually became number one contender for the IC title at Night of Champions. So this has already been building for a few weeks. I expect it to culminate here at the O2 Arena in London. Of course, Gunther had a classic at Clash of the Castle against Sheamus last year. Riddle, of course, had a fantastic match with Seth Rick and Rollins. Is no stranger to appearing and, of course, competing in the United Kingdom. I think this would be a great match to be in London for the IC title. Next, I'm going to go for the Tag Team Championships, Sammy and KO. I'm going to go for a triple threat match here against Judgment Day's Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Of course, both of them have already pinned Sammy and KO previously in a tag team match, and they've let everybody know about it on a number of occasions. And of course, we've got Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci from Imperium, who, despite losing a couple of occasions already to Sammy and KO, do seem to be knocking on the door in a number of segments. Imperium, Sammy and KO has been a regular feature on Monday Night Raw for the last few weeks. And I expect that to continue on the road to Money in the Bank. In fact, the reason why I originally had this as a tag team match, KO and Sammy versus The Judgment Day, I think that's going to take place at SummerSlam. I think Imperium will be inserted in this match to take the pinfall on this occasion. Therefore, it leaves KO and Sammy versus Judgment Day for August in Detroit. Moving on, let's talk about one of our first World Championship matches on the show. Seth freaking Rollins, I'm going to take on Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre has been off TV. Uh, of course, he's been healing some injuries. Of course, there's been rumors about his contract situation as well. It's been clarified that Drew is still under contract up until early 2024. So if he's fit and good to go, I can imagine he would want to be back for this show in London. To do a show in the United Kingdom, uh, of course, is big for Drew McIntyre. Of course, he was the face, pretty much, of the promotion for Clash of the Castle against Roman Reigns. Why not do another World Championship match this time around against Seth freaking Rollins? Babyface versus Babyface. But maybe, just maybe, that could be the thing that could turn Drew McIntyre here. If he was to fail once again for a world title in the UK, that could just be the key and that little ingredient that could spike a heel turn from Drew McIntyre. Would that leave Seth as a vulnerable cash in on the night? We'd have to wait and see, but certainly that could do Seth the face versus Drew McIntyre the heel then at SummerSlam. Moving on to the other World Championship, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, Roman Reigns to defend against Jimmy Uso. Now, there could be two different directions we could go here. We could go with a singles match. We could also go with Roman and Solo versus the Usos. But Jey Uso was a bit reluctant, of course, when we saw the super kick heard around the world. Of course, at Night of Champions, Jimmy Uso had finally had enough, had super kicked Roman Reigns on two separate occasions. It has made SmackDown must see this week for Roman Reigns' 1000 day celebration as champion the usos were invited to this where is this going to lead to how is this going to go for me the journey the build for this will be as exciting as ever as what we've seen with the bloodline storyline for me to do roman versus jimmy here yes it's predictable but at the same time there's some great ingredients we've seen with the storyline before we see how the storyline started with roman versus jay it'd be very interesting now to see if Jimmy Uso can finally do what he was meant to do when he first came back a couple of years ago. Remember he was sporting that, that sort of vest top that said nobody's bitch? Well now hopefully we're going to see that Jimmy Uso and for me this could be, well I think it'd have the ingredients to be a match of the night through storytelling at least. I'd hope that this would be a part of the Money in the Bank card. My next prediction is Oscar versus Bianca Belair. I would build this one last time. Bianca Belair just coming off an historic reign as Raw Women's Champion. Of course, lost the championship at Night of Champions to Oscar. Uh, the Mist has played its part in the last few weeks. And of course, Oscar using the Mist on her hand in a creative spot to rub it in Bianca's eyes. Of course, becoming champion as well. And I must admit, that was I was really shocked that that happened at Night of Champions. To do this match one more time to solidify Oscar as 
the women's champion i think could be a good decision from wwe sometimes we've seen the trilogies happen for me this feels like it could be a natural conclusion to that trilogy i'd be open to a gimmick match added to this as well uh, but uh, one thing's for sure i could see oscar uh, retaining on this occasion but uh, perhaps maybe the championships may now swap patterns as well oscar now holding the raw women's championship on smackdown rear holding the smackdown women's championship on raw i uh, haven't got rear featured on this card when Bianca was the longest reigning Royal Women's Champion. I guess they didn't want to swap the belts over. Now I wouldn't be surprised if they were to do that and perhaps Rhea could have a, a little dig in and saying, I thought I was going to swap this over with Bianca. Turns out it's Oscar. Well done, you've beat her, so I don't have to. Something like that that could hopefully build that long-term program with Rhea and Bianca that's been teased on a couple of occasions previously, the last being Raw after WrestleMania. But for this match here, uh, certainly we'd like to see it go down one last time here at Money in the Bank. Speaking of trilogies, will we get Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar one more time? Cody said he's freed his schedule, the challenge is open, wherever he'll be, it will be Brock Lesnar who he wants to face. Now, Brock, I imagine, will accept that challenge, but will it be at this show Money in the Bank or will it be at SummerSlam? Let's not sell Brock Lesnar short. He has been on every premium live event so far in 2023. This might actually be a record as well, because remember when Brock was around full-time back in 2002, 2003 and early 2004, uh, the pay-per-views were actually brand exclusive. So this is a record right now for Brock Lesnar to be on so many pay-per-views in a row. Uh, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see if this will happen and it will continue here with Money in the Bank, or if it'll be held over the summer stand. But one thing that it does tease, that maybe one-armed Cody will not be focusing on the Money in the Bank ladder match. Speaking of the Money in the Bank ladder match, let's look at the men's first. And if Cody is not in the match, we already know from the Raw side, Ricochet and Shinsuke Nakamura have qualified. Uh, the graphics showed six spots this year, so not seven like we've seen in recent years. That makes me wonder if Dominic Mysterio could fill in that final Raw place. Of course, he was laughed at this past week on Raw about the idea of him going for the World Heavyweight Championship. Imagine Dominic climbing the ladder and retrieving that briefcase. The heel turn for him started in Cardiff last year, turning on Rey Mysterio and then, of course, soon joining the Judgment Day. Of course, he's gone on a hell of a roll since then. Uh, for me, I think it'd be a lot of fun him being in the match, but it does feel weird to not have a Money in the Bank match with Cody involved. Of course, there'll be three spots for the SmackDown side. I've gone with LA Knight to win his qualifier over Montez Ford. Honestly, that could go either way. Montez would be great for ladder matches, but right now, LA Knight is over like Rover. I want to see him get his moment. I think he'd be very popular in the UK. The other two spots, I've gone for Sheamus, of course, uh, being from Ireland. I imagine he'll be very popular, a heavy favourite in the match as well. A former Money in the Bank winner also back in 2015. Of course, Sheamus had a standing ovation at Clash of the Castle. Could be the same here. And Bobby Lashley would be the last person to fill the spot in my opinion here. Bobby Lashley would be a heavy favourite looking at this lineup. And I do think Lashley versus Roman Reigns will happen later this year regardless. But of course, that would leave out certain superstars. I mentioned Cody Rhodes, but also Austin Fury, AJ Styles. There's a hell of a talent pool right now in WWE. And of course, maybe a few of them may be left off this card. Lastly, let's look at the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Of course, Becky Lynch has a qualifier against Sonya Deville next week on Raw. I expect her to win that. Zoe Stark has a qualifier against Natalia. I expect her to win that as well. I initially had Trish Stratus being involved in this match, but it looks like Zoe will get the nod, of course, pushing the fresh face, which is probably the right move to do to try and get Zoe Stark on the map in WWE and make a name out of her. As Zelina Vega, also on the SmackDown side, has a qualifier against Lacey Evans. Again, that's my prediction why she's in the graphic here. Uh, but of course, looking at the Raw side there, I mentioned Trish not perhaps being involved in this match because there's only one spot left, and I think Raquel Rodriguez needs to be in there. She's potentially one of the breakout stars uh, in WWE at the moment for the women's division. Certainly, it's just missing that one ingredient to get to the top end of the you know the championship picture if you will a match with her and Rhea Ripley will be a lot of fun later this year but for me personally she could be a favorite for money in the bank as could from the Smackdown side EO Sky again a breakout star just waiting for that moment could it be money in the bank or could it be a breakup from damage control with Bailey I also have Bailey involved in this match potentially these two needing to work together but of course with the idea of Bailey supposed to win this match maybe EO Sky is the one who wins it instead and Bailey 
gets upset. Certainly could be a fun ingredient having both of those in the ladder match at the same time. So that's going to be my prediction there. And of course, that is my predictive match card overall for Money in the Bank. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I've gone for eight matches in total. Like I say, Cody versus Brock, not 100% on that one, but certainly cannot rule it out at this point. For me, I think this looks like a stacked show for London at the O2. Uh, personally, for me, I'm looking forward to WWE returning to the UK. Uh, but that's all for me anyway. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment in below uh, what matches you want to see at Money in the Bank this year, who you want to see involved in the ladder matches as well, and who you think should be walking away with the briefcase. Thanks for watching as always. Take care, look after yourselves, and have a great day. You'll be watching SCW here on YouTube, and why not check out these videos on the side of your screen right now?